Good morning or afternoon or evening, depending where anyone is watching this from, and happy International Women's Day. Even though every day is Women's Day, it's nice to have a day that is dedicated to celebrating women and all the wonderful things that women do and are capable of. Um, I'm really excited today to be speaking to Tara Abrams, who um, does a lot of really incredible things and has worked with a lot of really amazing organizations. Um, but today we're going to be talking about She's the First, um, which is an organization that fights for a world where every girl chooses her own future and uh, it teams up with grassroots women-led organizations around the world to make sure that girls are educated, respected and heard um, and they advocate for girls and women who sometimes don't have a voice um, to advocate for themselves. Uh, Tara was also the deputy director of uh, an organization and a feature film called Girl Rising, which um, actually was kind of one of the reasons why I got into feminist work and advocacy for women's rights and girls' rights around the world. When I was filming in Atlanta, um, I felt really privileged and blessed to be given the opportunities that I was being given and I wanted to do more and learn more and help others and give back and after I watched that movie I really started focusing on the plight of girls around the world, especially in developing countries. So this is a really nice kind of cosmic connection that today I am talking to Tara who more or less was a big part of the reason why I have been so passionate about this work. So without further ado, and hopefully people are joining, okay, cool. I am going to add, as we know, I'm not great at this. <laughs> okay, here we go. Good morning or good afternoon. Hi. Hi. How are you? I am well. How are you? I'm okay. I had yes. a moment. Okay. So first of all, this is my first Instagram live. <laughs> and of course, my internet went out. And of course, there's construction in the apartment next door. <laughs> and of course, my kids will come in in a minute. I'm sure. I'm sure. So <laughs> thank you for bearing with me. I had that no. moment of panic. No, you're fine. I still find these lives. I've only done a few, but it's still such a strange view technology that is just yeah. not my generation. I just don't really understand this whole thing, but we're doing great. Here we are. Good. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> Here we are. And it's International Women's Day. What could be better? It's International Women's Day. Yeah. Um, I am so excited to, to talk to you and to share with, you know, all our followers, all the amazing work that She's the First is doing, and also all the amazing work that you have done. You are a massive inspiration to me. And as I said in my little prelude, you are a big part of the reason why I am so passionate about this work. Um, so I'm just very grateful, grateful to be here with you today. Oh, and we're so grateful to you for your support and for using your incredible platform in this way. That's what it's all about in terms of, you know, just lifting up girls and women everywhere. Totally. Um, so today we're really focusing on um, mentors um, mm -hmm. and we we're going to talk, get into kind of um, mentorship and how she's the first provides feminist mentorship for girls around the world. Um, I was thinking about this over the weekend of kind of mentors that have influenced me and um, and I'm curious who your mentors are. Um, you know, I wear a few hats as you obviously do as well. And so I have found that I've got kind of different mentors for different facets of my life. And um, the main thing that I have learned, especially as I've gotten older, um, the amazing thing about having mentors is someone and a safe place, not just to ask for help, but to ask for guidance and experience and um, sometimes help as well. You know, I would count a lot of my actress friends as mentors of mine. You know, um, 
I moved to a country at a young age and that was very isolating and lonely and I found it so instrumental to my well-being and my growth um, to be able to call you know friends and therefore mentors of mine yeah. um, to ask for advice. Um, another mentor of mine would be um, Christy Turlington I think growing up um, you know I would see a lot of people with a level of privilege and a platform that weren't necessarily always using it for all the right reasons or were mainly using them as self-serving for self-serving purposes and uh, from a young age I was aware of the work that Chrissy Tellington was doing with um, her women's and and mother mother um, organization yeah. every woman counts uh, every mother counts sorry yeah. Um, yeah. and she has been really inspiring to me a, a peripheral mentor less of a call up and ask for advice mentor but a peripheral mentor I've never met her but just have always been very inspired by her um, who have you all like considered as a mentor for you and all the amazing work that you've done throughout your life well, it's so funny that you said it that way, where you have mentors for different, different mentors for different parts of your life, because I feel that way too. I'm a really firm believer that mentorship doesn't just happen in one way or in one direction, right? You might think of mentor and think it's an older, more experienced person mentoring a younger, less experienced person. That can happen. But for me, and I truly say that's from the bottom of my heart, not just because I'm on She's the First Instagram Live, <laughs> but... But I've always thought about um, Tammy Tibbetts and Kristen Brandt and Katie Riley, who lead the organization as my mentors. You know, they come from a different perspective and, frankly, a different generation when it comes to girls', girls rights and thinking mm -hmm. about principles like feminist mentorship. They come from a different place when it comes to activism, right? And, and seeing their fire and their passion for this work truly inspires me. So they, I would count them as some of my mentors. I would also count my daughters. I mean, I have two daughters. I also have a son. But my daughters are the older ones. They're eight and 10. And when I see just the freshness with which they look at the world, just newness of everything is 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 so exciting and different. It gives me a renewed sense of purpose in terms of approaching the world, not with that jaded mentality that we might sometimes fall into as we get older. Um, but then the, the, the last thing I would say is that I have people who have formerly been my bosses. Not all of them have been mentors, but some of them have, right? People who challenge me to do, women in particular, who challenge me to do just my greatest work, right? Pull things out of me that I never thought or imagined would be possible. And that's been some of the most powerful mentorship that I've experienced in my life. And just in case this is like the real deal, Instagram Live. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> There's one of our mentors. <laughs> There's one of my mentors. <laughs> Off she goes. <laughs> um, so I, I have a bunch of questions, but because we are here to talk about She's the First and, yeah. you know, for some of my followers that may not be familiar with exactly what she's the first um, do, would you be able to give a little bit of a spiel about, about the amazing work that the organization does? Sure, sure, sure. So she's the first, works with girls to make sure that they um, are educated, respected, and heard. I mean, a lot of what we talk about at She's the First is that girls have rights, but they don't always experience them. And the difference between having rights and experiencing them is oftentimes really knowledge about what those rights are um, the skills and the, and the tools to be able to advocate for oneself in the right settings. Um, and then the ecosystems, you know, the, 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 the culture around you, the team of people, including mentors, who can really help you experience what are your rights um, as a girl. Um, so specifically what we do is we partner with local organizations in 12 different countries around the world, including Latin America, Sub-Saharan Africa, and South Asia, um, to build their capacity and their their ability to serve girls in a girl-centered way. We focus a lot on sexual and reproductive health and rights mm -hmm. to make sure that girls know about their bodies and and about what they are uh, what th that they have control over their own bodies and their their choices. Um, and we also really do um, dive into this idea of feminist mentorship, which is really about approaching mem mentorship from the perspective of really centering the girl and her needs and her dreams, as opposed to kind of imposing upon her what we would want for her, right? It's really important that she has the opportunity to decide 
what it is that she wants for herself. And so that's really what we focus on when we talk about um, the programs and the trainings that we do with organizations that are in our partner network all over the world. Right. Amazing. <laughs> that leads me to one of my questions, which is a little yeah. bit down below. Um, but uh, about, I mean, oh, yeah, I mean, just obviously, you know, this year has been very difficult for everyone in yeah. a multitude yeah. of ways. Um, but how have the last year's events um, impacted the needs of young women globally? Yeah. Uh, definitely. It's something that we're all thinking about and worrying about as she's the first in, in, in around the world, right, in the, in the international development sector overall. Um, lockdowns mean that girls may be in a place that's not safe. It mm -hmm. means that they may not be in school. In fact, it, pro it likely means that they're not in school. I think the predictions are that there are something more like 20 m million more girls may never return to school on top of the 130 million who are already outside of school, out of school prior to the pandemic. So this is a large scale, massive problem. And the thing that that is so powerful about girls going to school is not, of course, just the education and the knowledge and the skills that they gain when they get there, but it's also about preventing some of those other challenges and obstacles, really serious ones from getting in their way. So we're, we're likely to see, frankly, child marriage rates go up because of the pandemic. By some predictions, I think 2 million to 5 million more child marriages um, wow. as a result of the pandemic. Um, because when girls are home and they are not perceived um, as as being contributors, right, to the family in terms of going to school and earning an income, then they are quickly perceived in some situations as being a burden on the family. So the desire might be based on, you know, incredibly impossible choices. Um, the, the choice might be to have a girl get married at the age of 15, even younger, so that another family um, can, can take, take literally ownership in a way of, a, of that girl's future as opposed to her family. So, you know, we're, we're talking about things even beyond the sort of basic safe, safety and health considerations that everyone, right, is, is navigating through the pandemic. Um, I was on another um, conversation for I, IWD earlier today and was remembering where we were a year ago starting mm -hmm. lockdowns. And the, one of the first thoughts that I had um, when, when countries and communities are asking people to lock down is, what happens when home is not safe? What happens to those girls who, or, and women, frankly, who are in a situation of, of gender-based violence, domestic violence? And that's a global problem. It's a problem here as well as in the countries where she's the first works. So I think it's really important to keep in mind when we talk about going back to normal. I've thought about that a lot over the past few weeks in advance of International Women's Day. I'm not sure that I want to go back to normal because normal for girls and women wasn't always a great situation. In fact, mm -hmm. by many metrics, it was, a, it was a very difficult situation and I don't wanna go back to that place, right? Mm -hmm. I want us to use this opportunity to get girls back on track and mm -hmm. to ensure that when we come out of this pandemic, that we're prioritizing the needs of girls, we're accelerating their pathways to go back to school, we're ensuring that they have access to training programs that are going to give them the skills to go out into the world and earn income for their family in the ways that they want to. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the things that I think we're, we're trying to get ahead of. Um, but of course, in, in a situation where we are all to for, for the most part in quarantine and lockdown, it's just, it's really hard to do. But, but I have faith and I have hope that, you know, spring, at least here in the U.S., is around the corner yeah. and things will, will look up soon. Yeah. Um, and uh, so here, let me see. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, Take your time. Uh, that kind of, well, this kind of leads into this is what upcoming goals does She's the First have yeah. um, to uh, hope to achieve in assisting your partnered organizations? I mean, given mm -hmm. that, you know, things have drastically changed over yeah. the last year and are still changing. Um, yeah, what are, what are the kind of goals for She's the First? Yeah, I mean, I think it's making it through this time with an ability to support our partners um, and, and having that remain intact. So we came through this last year 
fulfilling all of our commitments to our local organizations, making sure that they had the resources to support girls with um, health and hygiene kits, with, in some cases, technology, um, you know, phones that they could use to stay in touch with teachers and mentors from their program. Um, so we want to continue that. And then we want to build because girls are going to need us more than ever after this pandemic for all of the yeah. reasons that I've described. And so, you know, we've come in, into this having under invested in girls um, and women. I think there was a study that came out a couple of years ago that said only 1.6% of philanthropy goes specifically to women and girls. And so yeah. we need to make sure that we, we up that percentage, yeah. especially because we know that girls and women are often the ones who bear the brunt in situations of emergency, of crisis, mm -hmm. of war, of pandemic. We know from the local uh, Ebola epidemic in Sierra Leone, a couple of years ago, that teenage pregnancy rates um, went up. And so these are the things that we're going to have to navigate through after mm -hmm. the pandemic. So what we're really excited about it, She's the First, is to be able to get back out to our partners and to be able to deliver the local training and capacity building that we know will really support these organizations in serving the needs of girls. Um, it just takes resources to get there, but we'll okay. get there. Right. We'll get there. And why you know, is mentorship such a focal point for, for She's the First? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I think what we've discovered over the many years um, that we've been working with girls is that going to school is, is a great start. It's, mm -hmm. it's really important, but it's not necessarily enough, right? Think mm -hmm. about your, where you started um, at mm -hmm. the beginning of this chat and talking about the mentors in your life. I think mm -hmm. about my own mentors I had a great education, but in some ways, it wasn't necessarily enough to guide me on the mm -hmm. right path, um, the path that was true to my heart and the path that was going to lead me to where, where I wanted to go. And the same is true for the girls mm -hmm. that we work with at She's the First. It's not just about giving them the schools and skills and then sending them on their way after they graduate from school. Right. It's about providing them with consistent, sustained support in the form of someone who can really open her eyes and help her see her path forward and do so in a way that is feminist, that is girl-centered, that is um, empowering, and that doesn't, again, put any constraints on her. Um, right. And I think that's the most important thing about what She's the First is doing, is everything we do is in a girl-centered way. Right. And also, I mean, kind of to touch on where we started as well, I mean, mentorship is so individual, you know, per the person that's seeking it, and especially mm -hmm. with like cultural differences or situational di uh, differences, family differences and things like that. Um, I think when you hear mentorship, you sort of think it's like helping with schoolwork or, or something really yeah. specific, and it's not. It's super individual and super specific to the person or the, you know, communities that are looking for um, advocacy and help and guidance and, and inspiration as well. I Absolutely. think, you know, I think having someone or a group of people to look up to as well is just, is so important. Um, Absolutely. No matter what your circumstances are. Hmm. Um, yeah, I love what you said about it being so individual, right? It's not just yeah. a one size fits all formula. And yeah. you also, girls need different things at different points in their lives too, right? Yeah. And when they're about to go to secondary school, that's different than they're, when they're about to go to university or go out into the world. And that's what right. we try to be mindful of also. Right. Um, and I mean, you obviously, you are involved in a lot of different women's organizations um what do you feel are the most important pillars for girls healthy development today mm -hmm. um yeah yeah i think they need knowledge mm. of course you can get that from school but you can get that a, a lot of other places because that filters to things like health and making sure that they know how to take care of their finances. So knowledge is a re really important. Mm -hmm. Alongside knowledge goes skills, right? They mm -hmm. need to have tangible skills. I think we all do. Um, things that we're really good at that we can put out into the world. I think also, I mean, it sounds funny to say, but just stuff, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. girls like need actual physical tools, things that they mm -hmm. can, like a, like a phone. It doesn't have to be a smartphone, mm -hmm. but books. I mean, things, some of those material things are actually quite critical for a girl mm -hmm. to be successful. It's not just about putting knowledge into her head. She needs some resources to sort of 
yeah. you know, put, take those ideas and turn them into some sort of action. Um, mm -hmm. And that could also have involved financial support, of course. Um, and then I think the last thing is mentorship and even more broadly relationships, relationships with different kinds of people who value a girl for who she is, not for her body, you know, for her mind, for her heart and for her potential contribution to the world, whatever that might be. I think relationships are so critical and important for girls. Right. And for people that are watching this, thank you everyone for, for being on here, who's watching. Um, you know, what are, speaking of resources, and I've linked, um, she's a first in my bio, so if anyone wants to learn more, of course, um, but what are some of your favorite, you know, resources or outlets that you've really lent on over the, you know, course of your, you know, career advocating for girls and, and women's rights? I mean, the t technology tools are amazing, right? So, so places like Instagram and Twitter can be sometimes destructive, but they can also be really powerful and empowering, especially for girls who are looking for an outlet for um, people to know about the amazing projects that they're doing in their community. So that's been a really great resource for me, especially in quarantine when I can't go back to Uganda where I was a year ago with She's the First to really witness firsthand what we do with our partners to support them with sexual and reproductive health and rights training. Um, so I think technology keeps us connected to the issues that girls are facing in a really interesting way. Um, and I also say, you know, She's the First at that link in your bio has a lot of great resources. Mm -hmm. If you want to know more about the issue, um, and just as, you know, there's not a lot of philanthropy that goes to women and girls, sometimes it's hard with so many things going on, rightly so, you know, a pandemic, um, a, a racial reckoning, the election last year in the US, it's hard for girls and women to sort of get airtime amidst all of that. So it's really important organizations like She's the First and others are really centering girls issues and what they're going through in the pandemic and putting that front and center. So follow those girls and women's focused organizations today on International Women's Day and then keep them with you all the rest of the year so that you can continue to keep track of what's happening with girls and women. And if there's any way that people want to support she's the first mm -hmm. it's um i read that 30 dollars a, a year can keep a mentor active in a girl's yeah. life is that right yeah. Absolutely. So if you um, if you go right now, um, an amazing uh, cam matching campaign is happening. So if people are interested in becoming a new monthly donor, it, you double the support that you give by, by virtue of the matching donor. So it's really um, it's really a great time to get involved. And then I would also say just just keep in mind that there are lots of things that you can do even locally, even in quarantine to support girls and women in your own community mentoring a woman who might be looking at starting a business or being a big brother or big sister to a young person in your community. And all of those things are important because when we value girls anywhere, we're valuing girls everywhere. And so don't let yourself off the hook. There's something that you can do in your own community to get involved. And I really encourage you to do it. And it would be great if it was with She's the First. <laughs> um, well, this has been really, really um really inspiring and, and informative. Um, and I'm, I'm really grateful. And I, I hope whoever's watching has been as inspired as I have having talked to you, Tara. Um, because it is International Women's Day, I wanted to ask a few women-based questions. Um, who are some of your, fam uh, your favorite female musicians? Oh, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> So going way back, I would say um, Joni Mitchell. I yeah. grew up on her, um, on, on Blue and just that whole album. It's just amazing. I mean, now I would certainly say Adele is up there. So I'm like a ballad person. Um, <laughs> so I love singing. I sang back in the day. I won't do it now, but I did sing back in the day. So for me, Adele is just amazing, right? The emotion, but then also just the powerhouse voice. Um, incredible. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. I'm a big Rihanna fan. Yeah. Uh, always a Swifty, Taylor Swift throwing through. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Especially with with little kids too. That also helps like bring people together. Taylor Swift brings everyone together. But I would yeah. also I agree with Rihanna <laughs> as well. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, well, 
I'm so thankful for you taking out time of your very, very busy, busy oh. schedule um, to talk to me. And I'm really, really excited to keep, um, you know, learning more about She's the First. And, um, and this was just, this was really, really wonderful and special and a beautiful way to honor Women's yeah. Day, International Women's Day. So. Oh, thank you for all of the support. And um, for, again, for using your platform for this. I mean, you are a role model and a mentor to us as well. So thank you so much for, for doing this. And happy International Women's Day. Happy International Women's Yay. Day. <laughs> well, have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. And um, I, I look forward to, to keep kind of working with you in this organization and, yeah. and learning more and, and um this was this was wonderful. Yes. So have Thank a, you have, so have much. Have a great day, Tara. You too. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye.